Some feedback has come concerning the joy and um, learning that people have gained through some of the architectural renderings and other aspects that I have shared as I've gotten out of our archives. So I'm going to do a mixture of things that are in the building now as well as looking back at what the plans for the building were and I hope to continue to make some new revelations to be able to share with all of you. But I wanted to talk about the proposed stained glass. Um, there aren't any designs relative to what that stained glass would have looked like, but I, I in sharing why we have plain glass, um, it was a, a something that somebody commented that they were unaware and were curious why it was that the sanctuary um, through, through the nave has clear glass and it became a financial issue. So this is the architectural rendering of the exterior of the sanctuary as we now worship them. So the, the windows we're talking about are the main windows here of the chancel area. Now you'll see in this architectural rendering it has the statue which I've covered in prior videos and we'll be talking a little more about in future ones as well. Um, but, and I'm just going to hold this up so you can see as far as how close things got. Now, from this door over, all of that part of the building was already in existence. So there really isn't a change other than landscaping um, relative to that. So really from these two doors on represents the final sanctuary as it was built. And these are the windows primarily that we're talking about because the windows up here relative to where the statue is, these are the ones that we do have stained glass in. Now that stained glass was added in the 1970s, so it was not even part of the um, original construction at the time. So the money just really ran out or they decided that it was not an expense that they wanted to, to have at that time. So I found the financial estimates which I just found very interesting to what that project cost. And the total cost for the project, which included an amount relative to the mortgage that um, still was outstanding on the prior building, as they were only really in occupancy of that building for about eight years before they started to plan the sanctuary that we um, currently worship in. The total cost of that project, including that piece of the mortgage, was $339,000. So just ponder that for a minute. That's $339,000. And what is not included within that is the stained glass. So what was included in that figure was the estimated cost of the building, including the architect's fees, the pews, the choir stalls, chancel furnishings, and the statue. The statue is part of that cost the carpeting in the sanctuary, the landscaping. Now this was exclusive of the court, and I will go into this in a later, later rendering, but originally the parlor as we have it now was not part of what they were proposing, but they had a an open court, so an outdoor court proposed in the area that we currently now have the parlor or the family room area. So it was landscaping relative to that being an outdoor space rather than an indoor space. So the garden, um, that court, the landscaping of that, furnishings for new school rooms, et cetera, and stained glass. So the two pieces that are not part of that estimate are the landscaping of the garden court, if that happened, which was estimated at three to five thousand dollars, or three to six thousand, let's call it, and the stained glass, if desired, from six to ten thousand. So if we take those two figures and add them together, and I'll use the high figures, it would be an additional $16,000. And it probably wouldn't have been that high, but we're using the high figures for that. Um, so they then computed what they had on, on hand, what was being pledged, etc., etc. And so how much was going to have to be taken out in mortgage or added to the present mortgage in order to be able to, to finalize this plan. And it was $151,000 or 152 because it's almost $152,000. Now that's not including that 16,000 that I quoted before. So you'd have to capital, you'd have to add that on to that existing mortgage. Now all of that in today's dollars actually doesn't seem that bad. Um, but at the dollars of that time, the way that the church had really been fiscally prudent, they were trying to minimize the impact that it had and the outstanding debt that the church would be responsible for repaying so that the church's money really could be spent on ministry and mission 
there right at the church in, in our region. So the stained glass windows, this is what I was originally going back to. So the windows here again of, of the nave of the church. The 6,000, the low range of the stained glass is just glass. So no figures in them or anything else. You could call it artistic renditions. So looking at our chancel, it would be that kind of style that um, of the 6,000 would represent for all of the windows in the nave itself. The 10,000 represents putting figures into each one of those windows. So this might include figures of apostles or figures from specific biblical passages or stories. So the estimate goes up by 4,000 as soon as you start to add intricacy or specificity to those windows. And ultimately the decision was made at the time to not include stained glass. So they built it, they had the glass as we currently have in it, and they were then thinking about whether to add the stained glass, similar to how the stained glass was in, added and installed in the chancel area at that time, and they made the decision not to, in the hopes that perhaps in the future they would. Kind of like the organ, if you've joined me on those tours, started off only occupying one pipe closet in the hopes that eventually the second closet could be filled and added as was originally conceived for the congregation, which eventually it was. Um, so that's the story on the stained glass, is they ran out of money in some ways, but also just made to the decision that they didn't want to incur further debt at that point. And I'm going in a future video to talk more about the statue because I found some, some correspondences from the original artist and the church and then the artist that followed that the church asked if he couldn't take up the project and so what happened in regards to that. But that's the story on the stained glass and I know it's not exactly plumbing into details or looking at things that are the same or different, but I hope that you found it informative even just to think of cost of the cost then versus what the cost even would be now and the prudence of those whose shoulders um, we stand upon that said we don't want debt to be something that burdens the church for a long-term reality and so we're going to try to find the best way forward to still have this space to worship God in. So thanks for joining me. A little more about the windows of Christ Church.